Hello and welcome to the video. My name is Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire and in today's video we're going to be doing some uh, Ubiquiti Unified troubleshooting uh, and we're going to be focusing on primarily on cable faults, um, just how to spot them, uh, kind of issues that you'll see and uh, ways to avoid doing uh, having cable faults in the first place. Um, the reason why we're focusing on this is because we get called to a lot of uh, kind of troubleshooting of um, Ubiquiti installations, normally by people that have done it themselves or by people that are new to it or by kind of trades that aren't used to working with data cabling. Uh, and 90% of the time I would say that it's a cable fault, very unusual to get a, a software fault on a uh, on a kind of simple unified setup where you've just got you know access point and PoE switch etc. It's normally a cable fault. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to give you some quick tips uh, on on how to uh, how to spot it, what the kind of cable faults can cause, and what to look out for, and then how to avoid it really. Um, so before we get any further, the most important thing about all of this, and the thing that you've got to remember, is if you're ever putting in an Ethernet cable, if it's one or a hundred, you must test them, test your cables, always work on the assumption that they're not going to work, and you know be happy when they do work rather than working on the assumption that they will work and then being frustrated when they don't because you just save yourself a lot of time. Um, a lot of these issues um, are just simple to spot. They would be, you know, really simple test, test, fail, re-terminate and then, uh, and then you, you, you fix the issue. So that's the sort of number one thing here. All of this would be avoided. This whole video would be unnecessary if people just tested their cables. Um, so I'm just going to sort of show you basically how, how what we're looking for. So we'll start by saying this is a PoE switch. Um, this is what we're using today. This is a Unify Lite 8 um, PoE switch. Fairly new model. Um, it's got four ports PoE and it's got four ports non-PoE. Um, and we're going to be using this as a kind of indicator. Um, all PoE switches are different. Um, but they've all got sort of similarities to them. Um, most of them, well, I think all of all that I've seen have got two lights and or somewhere, not necessarily above the ports here. You can't see them at the moment because they're not on, but when they come on, we'll show you the two lights. Um, they might be somewhere else. They might have a little thing above them with some lights on, but most, you know, all switches have lights on them to indicate what they are. If you're not sure what it lights mean, there's nearly always or always a key on what they mean. Um, for example, in this one, we've got a light on the left and a light on the right. The light on the left is PoE, the light on the right is the, is the uh, link speed. So, that's our, that's our switch we're going to use in today, and that's the kind of one of the indicators that we'll be talking about. And then we've also got a uh, Unify uh, AC light. It's an older model now, but still very good access point, and we're just going to be using that to, uh, to show you what we mean. So I've got here a patch lead, a completely unnecessarily long patch lead, but I've got a patch lead, just Cat 5E, and we're just going to plug that into the access point, and then we're going to plug this into the switch, into one of the PoE ports on the switch. Remember I said the first four are PoE. Um, and we get two lights, like I was talking about straight away, we'll zoom in on this so you can see uh, what we're talking about that will just be up here. So uh, you've got the uh, PoE on the right, which is basically signifying that this switch and this port is providing PoE. Uh, and then you've got the link speed on the left, so in this case we've got a gigabit connection, um, which you'd expect this is a Cat 5 e it's gigabit cable, it should be able to give um, to give this speed. The lights are just dropped there just as uh, as the a device is booting, but if you give it a minute, once that device is, uh, is ready to go, this will all go back to the lights and you'll get the link speed on that. Um, if you don't have a, a device, if you don't have a light on the right, that doesn't necessarily mean you've got a problem, it just probably means you're not using a PoE device. All these ports here only have, uh, they're not PoE, so, um, you wouldn't get a PoE light. Um, I think actually on this case they, they signify, yeah, just either that it's off, so if this is off then obviously you're not got PoE. So you've got a green light would just be a link. So the access point's now up, we've got the blue light um, and the PoE switch is, is blinking away on the link and the, then you've got the solid light for the PoE. So that, that is all good, that is everything that we should be seeing from a PoE switch and from an access point. So first impressions, looks good, looks good from this end as well. So we're, not, we're happy that this cable's working. Okay, so let's start to look at some of the issues we might have with cables. Now I've got four cables here. Um, now as you may know, a, a Ethernet cable is a cable made up of four pairs um, or eight, eight strands and, and basically each one of those strands or each one of those pairs has a job. So what we're gonna do is show you the job of those pairs. So we'll start or not necessarily the job, but show you what impact they have. So we're gonna start, I've got 
the first pair in this cable, so the orange white, has been cut. So I've cut these cables here, and I'm going to plug this access point in again and show you exactly what happens. And I can tell you beforehand what happens, absolutely nothing. The, orange, the white, orange, orange are an essential part of making this access point work, and you'll see why. Or well, what happens. Nothing. We get not a single light on that, so that is nothing happening there. The orange, a white, orange, orange is essential. So if you've got if you've got nothing happening on your uh, on your access point, one of the reasons might be because you've got a white, orange, orange out, and the and the device is not working at all. So there you go. There. Now I will show you, but I can tell you exactly the same thing happens on the white uh, on the white green. So white, green, green, exactly the same issue. We'll plug it into the PoE switch, um, and we're going to plug it into the access point, and again. Nothing. Dead. Dead to the world. So again, those two pairs, very important. White orange, white green, and green and white and orange, they're all very important. Right, so move on to the blues. This cable, again, unnecessarily long cable. We can plug this one in, see what happens. Oh, and we've got light. Right, so, all the other pairs are in. The white, the white orange, the white green, and the white brown are all in, but the white blue and the blue are cut and we're getting a light. The access point has lit up. It is now uh, going from white, it's doing its initiation stages, and you can see that that link light on the right has come on, or on the left as you look at it, sorry, uh, has come on. Um, so, and it's just re rebooting up again. So this is the same process that we saw earlier, where it just takes a minute while the access point's up, and then that light will come back on. But what you will notice on the zoom in is that actually that light is the wrong color. That light is now orange. Now it should, whereas before it was green. So why is the light orange? The reason the light is orange is because that link is now operating at 100 megabits per second rather than at full gigabit speed. And you'll see that from the light on the right hand side here, it will tell you uh, the link speed. So it will tell you what it's doing. You can also see it's taking a little bit longer, uh, I think, to, to communicate there. But yeah, the light's up and um, and it's orange. Now, you wouldn't spot this necessarily at all. And actually, if you've got an internet connection that's say 70 megs or 50 megs or whatever you've got that's under 100 megs, you could probably operate on this fine. You would never notice any difference. But what might happen one day is you get a fast internet connection. So you get a 300 meg connection and you suddenly notice that actually your Wi-Fi is not as fast as, you, as it should be. And you'll probably be phoning your internet provider saying you're not giving me the speed that you should be getting me or you'll be chasing your tail looking for the issue. And actually, the issue is, that there's a cable fault. So in this case, the white, blue, uh, and blue, it's not connected properly or it's been damaged and the access point is not functioning at its full potential. Now you can spot this on the controller. If you look at uplink, it will say 100 on the speed rather than 1000 and that's what you're looking for. But the switch is the quickest way to spot it. If you've got a PoE switch, just spot the PoE switch, see that that light's orange and you know that you've got 100 megabit link. If you're using a PO injector, that's not simple. You will be able to see it in the controller. It is also available, I believe, on the standalone access, although we'll, we'll have to double check that. Okay, so that's what happens when the white, blue, blue uh, is cut. And now the last cable, uh, last pair we've got is the um, white, brown, brown. So again, we'll try that and see what impact having that cut will do, or it has. Okay, so we've got light on again. I'm going to spoil the surprise here. This does exactly what the white blue blue does. If you've cut one of these pairs, it only functions at 100 megabits. So uh, the access point will work, it will come up it will blue, but it's not functioning at its full speed. It's only working up to 100 megabits a second. Okay, so that's what that is going to do. So there we talked about cable damage. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be that the pairs are cut at each end. It might be that it's not terminated properly at one end or like uh, the pins, it's not all the way to the end on the pins. Um, it might be that just something's been clipped along the cable or possibly, you know, like a screw's gone into it or something like that. I mean, there's, there's lots of possibilities, but it essentially means that these two cables at somewhere along the line aren't fully connected. And you'll spot that on the tester very easily. It will tell you that you've got a fault on, on one of the pairs. One of the ways, or one of the most common reasons for having faults uh, is on the termination of cables, is that um, if you're doing a, if you're doing a uh, termination of a cable head, uh, an RJ45, 
Um, if the, the old style heads where you have to push them in and get them all straight to the end, it's quite difficult to do that, especially if you're not practicing it. It takes a long time to get to get uh, proficient at, at doing that. Um, and even if you've even if you've done loads and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them, you still get faults on those. It's just it's just the nature of the beast. So the industry's kind of changed. This has been around a while now, but I just not everyone's aware of it still. Um, so there are what's called uh, pass through heads now. So this is an RJ45 head, and you can see in this one, rather than trying to butt the copper up to the uh, end of the connector, the cable goes through the connector, and then you use a special type of. Um, crimper that has a blade on it like these ones there's many available and essentially that just cuts it flush so that you know when you look at the head that all the cables are coming through and they're in the right order so you you're in the you know you know it's not going to be the head you're not going to get failures on this the only time you might get failure on it is if your crimpers are old knackered the blades aren't blunt or they're not pushing down all the pins properly but most of the time this is going to be a pretty solid way of ensuring you're not getting a cable fault so Recommend to use, use uh, pass-through heads if you can. If you can, if you're not using pass-through heads, cape heading termination faults uh, are probably going to be uh, one of the likely causes of, of the issue, especially if you're not practiced at doing it. So, pass-through heads always very useful. Now, one more thing I want to show you, uh, which is probably the hardest one to spot if you're not looking at the switch, and that is uh, just an incorrect termination. So this is a termination where actually you just made a mistake on the on the pairs, on uh, how they're lined up, or like you've got them in the wrong color order. Um, so, or what people quite often do, so what I've done deliberately on this one, is that I've put one of the heads on this cable the wrong way around. So rather than having the copper facing me when I put it on with the white orange on the left, I've put the cable with the back facing me so that the br white brown, sorry, the brown is my first cable on this, uh, on this side and then it's normally uh, done on this side. So the copper is incorrect on each side. Now, you might think that might not work at all, but actually it does work to a point. So what I'm gonna show you is we'll just plug this into one of the ports, and then we're gonna plug this into the access point, and we're gonna see what it does. Now this one really does confuse people. Sorry, I'll hold that up so you can see what happens. Right, so straight away you can see on the light that we've got a, uh, we've got a POE light. So that's come on. So the device is now booting up, it's starting, it's doing its initialization, and I can tell you what's gonna happen. This will go blue. This will boot up and go blue, but that light will never light up. And the reason for that is because we've given power to this device via PoE, but we've not given it a data link. So there is no connection to the network through this cable, through the switch. It's only providing the power. And exactly the same can happen on a POE injector. If you just plug a POE injector into an access point, it will power up, but you've got to get that other side, the LAN, into, uh, into your network before it's going to work. So you'll see that it's booting up, um, and that will go blue. Now, one of the problems with this is that everybody looks for the blue light on the access points. Uh, even experienced installers will say the blue light is on, it's working. And that's not necessarily true, okay? And it might be working, but it might not be working. So we'll just go into that in a little bit more detail. So what I mean by that is we can see this access points come up. So say this is stuck on your ceiling or your wall or wherever it is, you can see the blue light. For you, that reassuring blue light means that it's working. If you look at the switch, you're gonna get a different story. So we've got the POE uh, light on, but we haven't got the data link on, so it's not working from this side. If you look at your controller, you will probably find that this is giving you a bit of an odd reading. So this is either going to be offline completely, you won't see it, or it will be online, which is confusing. And I'm just gonna explain that to you now. So it will be online, and the reason it will be online is because Ubiquiti make their access points mesh. And what I mean by that is if you have another access point that's plugged into the network, you've got both the lights on, it's working well through the cable and passing data, and you've got this one that isn't too far away from this one, this will wirelessly link to that one. So it will link to the other access point and it will provide a connection wirelessly for this access point. This access point will then also provide Wi-Fi. So essentially, this access point is doing a job. It is it is being an access point, but it won't be working at full capacity. Now in some situations where you can't get 
on some uh, network cable, etc., then the mesh point, the meshing is really useful. You might just be bridging the last little bit. But if you've run cables uh, and you want to get this access point working at full capacity, you need to make sure that that cable is working properly. Now, the way to spot this, other than looking on the switch, is that on the controller, it will say connected wirelessly, like this. Um, and that's what to look out for, because once you set up wireless connection, then you know that this access point is not connected to the network properly. It's on. It's not cable connected. And sometimes it's a really simple mistake, like you haven't plugged the PoE switch into the main network, etc., etc. But it might be that it's a cable fault such as this. And these faults, where the copper cables are not in the right order, are the kind of fault that you're looking out for. So just a like simple example: head on the wrong way around, cable still working as PoE, uh, but not working as network. So that is just about it, really. Um, I think that uh, I kind of get get the point across. Uh, make sure you test the cables um, and just use the switch, and also just use some of the controller features as well. You can see there's there's quite a lot of information there. It will tell you it will tell you if something's not functioning properly, and it doesn't necessarily jump out. But if you've got like an access point that's not working properly, it's got low performance, then this kind of wirelessly connected. That is a really prime example. We've had peak uh, customers before where they've had a uh, an access point like in a garden office, um, sort of you know 30, 40 meters away from the house, and that's been wirelessly linking to to one in, that's in the house, and their performance has been terrible. And they just sort of say, "Well, I thought Unify is supposed to be really good, and it's rubbish, and I can't ever do anything, and I've got a three hundred meg connection in my house, but it's only twenty megs out here, and that's just because they've got that wireless link." So just look out for that. That's one of the main things. Pass through heads, test your cables, that's my final things. Thanks very much for watching, please do subscribe to the channel uh, and uh, hit the bell icon to uh, get notifications. Thank you very much.